Welcome back to our video series on the play framework using Scala. So we got to the end of the last video and we <clears throat> theoretically have kind of everything working and I can log in. It shows the item that we have. We can add another task. Uh, the thing is when I click on these they're supposed to delete and that's not going to work. Okay, and the problem is that while everything compiles nicely, the integer value that we are passing through now to do that is an, is currently an, an, uh, an index. Actually, there's an interesting, yeah, that's why when I clicked one of them, I knew the other one would go away. So because it's expecting an index and it's actually doing it with an ID, with a, a, an ID in the database, those two don't necessarily match up, okay? And so we're gonna to have to make some changes. The first change that we're going to, so let's, let's talk through the changes first and then we'll, we'll decide how to do it. We are going to have to make a new version of the JavaScript and unfortunately a lot of the old version is going to be the same or maybe that's, that's fine. This isn't real software maintenance. Normally I would have just been refactoring the whole code and not keeping multiple copies of it. Uh, but this is a learning experience and so you do things like that. So what needs to happen here? Okay, so the remove I task needs an item ID. It needs the ID of the item that we're removing. But when we get all the tasks, all we're giving you back is strings. Okay, well, that's potentially uh, problematic. So we need, so I have the, we already made a case class for our user data here. I'm actually going to make a case class for a task item that is just going to have, yeah, ID is an int and the text is a string. And notice that in this case, I don't need the user ID. This is being sent back and forth between the server and the client for a particular user who's logged in. So I was able to clip that down from the full data from it. And our database, when they get tasks, should not return a sequence of string. It should return a sequence of this task item. I, yes, it's still called, the file is still called user data. Using a more generic name would probably be better, but we're not gonna fix that right now. So this really should be a task item. Okay. Uh, now it might be tempting to try to make a task item of item dot I want to say it's task ID or item ID that's right item dot item ID comma it's not I T E E M I'd like to type this correctly so you can see it not not work the way it's supposed Supposed to. Uh, the problem is, remember, everything that's happening inside of here is really happening in Postgres. And Postgres knows nothing about task items. Okay. It knows, it does know effectively about the things that are in this tables. Okay. So it knows about item row, okay, but it does not know about this task item. So what we need to do here is actually yield the full item. And now my problem is that it's, it's a tight mismatch between these things. And then we can do a map of, it was in a future. So I want to take the future and I need to map its contents, future.map. Uh, and its contents were items. So I guess to document this, let's go ahead and say, take all the items and let's see so this was now the contents of the future is items so i want to map items rocket i'm like i have one too many maps here oh uh, rocket items map an item rocket paste so after we get the stuff back from Am I missing close parentheses? There we go. So after we get the item rows, the things that are actually in the database, of uh, back from the database, we just need to run through and convert them to the type of thing that we are going to send 
back and forth. Okay, now of course this is unhappy because uh, this, and it, actually in some ways it's fairly simple, it says that it doesn't know how to serialize it. Well, we did that before for our user data. It turns out we can do the same thing. We are, except here we don't want a reads. We want an item data writes. Because we need to be able to, uh, and is that, no, it's a tasks, tasks item writes. Okay, so now that knows how to serialize it. And so when we get the task list, we're not just gonna get a sequence of strings. I think it's actually, uh, I have to admit, I kind of want to see what happens if I refresh this and run it because it compiles now. But we're sending something a little bit different through. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Okay, we get some fun stuff over here, but it was on the JavaScript side. Okay, objects are not valid as React child. Yeah, uh, because we actually sent through our JSON uh, for those those values okay, so all of these all of these task items got sent through and they should just be JSON objects that have ID and text uh, they should be fairly simple but that's what we sent through okay so how what do we have to do now we have to get it so the react understands those things so let's go down here to our JavaScript and let's make a new file called version 5.js because I know this is the type of thing that I will normally forget. I'm going to go into here and I'm going to change this to use version 5 immediately. Oh, yeah, sure. We'll just copy all of version 4, paste it in Java 5 or in version 5. Some of this we don't actually need. This was when we were first learning how to do React. That's not actually functional code for us. The rest of this is all functional stuff. Uh, we can update our print message if we want. Uh, the update the name of the main component. Once again, those aren't necessarily required, but we're on version five, so let's go ahead and do that. A lot of this is going to stay the same. Okay, the the handling, the login, the create user. All of that's basically the same, but when we're in our task list, the handling the delete click of, and when we load our tasks is going to be a bit different. Okay, so loading the tasks had just been, tasks here was a sequence of strings, and so we just set state on tasks. And our state up here has tasks, which was an empty array. It's still an array, it still sequences, but when we render it, it is not coming through that way. And of course, because this is JavaScript, there is no type checking, nothing that is helping us to, to really find this error. Uh, we just, we, we have to, to know what's going in here. So uh, here we map a task and an index. And I am actually going to get rid of the index so that we just map the task because that task now has an ID on it. Now I am making certain assumptions about how JSON is choosing to serialize. If we were to get some errors, I'd put some, some uh, console.log statements in here. And handle and do the, uh, when we handle the delete click, we also want this to be task.id and down here is going to be task.text so we're going to pull out the text to actually put on there other than that this stays the same we're still starting off with an empty array but now it's going to be populated not with an array of just strings it's going to be an array of objects and those objects are going to should have an id field and a text field because that is what we specified over here okay um, 
and that would pass that through. Sure. Let's see how close that is. Let's see if I have to get some, put in some print statements to see what the serialization. Oh, value version four. Apparently there is another four somewhere in here, right there. Five. Okay. So I can add, add another, okay, and let's get rid of the working, and it went away. Um, okay, I'm I'm not convinced yet. Okay, yeah, those those things seem to. Okay, it appears that they are deleting properly. So now we have a fully functional version. It uses a database for the back end. It is now persistent. If I wanted to, if I create another user, ah, we have a, an error with user creation. Okay, so one more thing to check. It's good to go through and do our debugging, but logging in, adding, removing, all of that seemed to be there. We did make some changes for the database stuff on uh, creation. So we'll come back for one more video and probably finish all of this off.